Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our combined service and the final covenant service of this year in Jesus' name. I'm going to rise up and pray to the Lord as you prepare yourself for the final blessing of this covenant month. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer that this day will be a day when God opens the heavens and pours upon your soul, upon your spirit, upon your home, your family, upon the church of the living God. The abundance and the sufficiency of His blessing from on high. That everything you've been asking the Lord, desiring, demanding from the Lord in prayer, from the very beginning, of this covenant month until this wonderful, beautiful, and glorious day that the Lord in His love and mercy and grace will pour from heaven upon your heart, upon your life. It is grace by His power in the name of the Lord, our Redeemer, that will never, never be the same again. That the mighty hand that created the universe will do a creative work in your heart, your life. And the mark of heaven the mark of the supernatural will be seen visible in your life for throughout this year and the rest of your life. Pray that heaven will look upon you with favor and grace with mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. I get God in heaven, redeem our Father. We thank you because we're here today. Thank you because you've kept us alive. You've kept our families alive, our wives, husbands, and children, and our loved ones. Lord, we pray that in this glorious day in your presence, we'll receive abundant blessings in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see what we have not seen, to comprehend what we have not understood, and to know even the unknowable in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that you grant us a gift of faith today, that this faith will work wonders in every life, that this year will be a beautiful year, a wonderful year, a miracle packed year in Jesus' name. Bless your people all over this nation, all over this continent, and beyond this continent of Africa today, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. It's a joy to be together today. Is that right? I pray the joy of the Lord will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. We are concluding our series today on our covenant services. And the Lord has revealed quite a lot. And normally when we come for a covenant service like this, at the beginning of the year, we map out according to the promises has given us what we expect for the year. And everything you have heard this year, you will experience in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15 all through to verse 20. 
Mark 16, from verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye to all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Their signs is going to follow us this year. The signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sea, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken these unto them, he was re received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them. The Lord will walk with you. Confirming the word for signs following. And everybody said, Amen. I'm talking to you on supernatural signs for faithful believers. Supernatural signs for faithful believers. You see, for what Jesus said, these signs, they're supernatural. They're heavenly. They're out of the ordinary, extraordinary. And he said, these supernatural signs shall follow them that believe. Therefore, believers, he said in my name, they will cast out devils. In his name, they will speak with new tongues. He said, in his name, they will take up serpents. In his name, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not touch them. In his name, they lay hands on the sick. And the sick people, what will happen to them? They shall recover. But stretchy they wait forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with what? Signs following. The children of Israel experienced a lot of the miraculous supernatural things in Egypt just before they came out of that land of captivity. And from the time they came out until they got to the land of Canaan, they saw supernatural signs every day. They entered into the land of Canaan and they began to see the supernatural. And then eventually a king was appointed. And after his coronation, we discovered because that king was not a prayerful man. He was a persecutor of the innocent, and he actually concentrated on persecuting innocent David more than ruling in the kingdom of Israel. Eventually all the signs taught, and it went on and on like that, until they began to ask a question in Psalm 74. Psalm 74 verse 9. We see not our signs, there is no more any prophet, neither is there any among us that knoweth how long, O oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Block it out of thy bosom, for God is my king of old, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. You see, the children of Israel began to have this concern, and they began to ask, Where are those signs? Where are the wonders? Where are the miracles? He said, We see not our signs. Because from the time of Moses, anywhere you saw Moses, anywhere you saw Joshua, anywhere you saw Caleb, anywhere you saw the people of God, the children of Israel, signs followed them. Anytime Aaron and Moses went before Pharaoh, signs will follow them to the very presence of Pharaoh. And then when they went out and they got to the Red Sea, signs followed them unto the Red Sea. And every day the manna that came and the water that came out of the rock 
signs were following after them. He got to Jordan and the signs followed them to Jordan and he came around the walls of Jericho and the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the power, the supernatural followed them all through to Jericho. And as they divided the land and they went forth, there was nobody able to stand before them. But all that stopped. And now they began to ask, where are the signs? Where are those wonders? And now the Lord is telling us, the time of signs and wonders, that time has come back. In your life, in your family, in our church, in all the locations where we mention the name of Jesus, and we have a sign, but there this year, there will be signs and wonders. In Isaiah chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 18. Behold I, and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. It says, when we allow the Lord once again to come and dwell, make his approach among us, within us, the Lord that dwelleth in Mount Zion. Then from the Lord of hosts, from the Lord of battles, it says, there will be signs and wonders, and the signs and the wonders will be experienced by all the people of God. That's why it says, Behold I, and the children whom thou hast given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. And then it goes on to say, As and when they shall say unto you, You know, there are some people that are thinking, No more miracle. No more signs, no more wonders, no more answered prayer. This has happened to them, that has happened to them, and they have not seen solution to their problems, but this year's solution has come. And so because they're looking at the past, and they're looking at the time of Saul, and they're looking at the time of Ahab, and they're looking at the time of Manasseh, and then they don't see any sign, and they do not understand that the Lord has come to visit his people, that now I and the children of the Lord has given me, were for signs and for wonders in the household of faith. Therefore they will say unto you, in verse 19, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that are familiar spirits, and unto wizards that be, and that mortal should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead. There are some people that will invite you. They'll say, they see something there, they see something there. You tell them, we're seeing something greater here. And we're not going to go to the powers of darkness to seek any help. There is no help in there. I say there is no help in them. Our help is in the Lord. The signs and wonders will come from the Lord of hosts, and He dwells among His people in Zion. And because He dwells among us, we are not going to stray away and go anywhere seeking for signs and wonders. They are here. And you'll see them today in your life in Jesus' name. In verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Go back to the law and go back to the testimony. Go back to the word. Because it says, this word, this book of the law, shall not depart out of your mouth. You meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then shall not make their way prosperous, and you will have good success. That's why it says, go back to the word, to the law, and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no truth and there is no light in them. Remember, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for what? For signs and for wonders in Israel. I want you to see that exactly in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 11. It gets us back to that which the Lord has said, Behold, I am the children whom the Lord has given me. Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 11. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, 
I will declare thy name unto the brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Look at verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. I will put my trust in him. If you will put your trust in the Lord today, you'll see wonders. You'll see signs. Then it now says in that verse 13, and again, Behold, I am the children which God has given me. What are we for? For signs and for wonders in the household of faith. As we trust the Lord, as we believe the Lord, as we follow after the Lord, as we obey the Lord, as we put our confidence and trust in the Lord. He'll give us those signs and wonders, even from this very time in Jesus' name. But look him, we're coming back to Mark chapter, Mark chapter 16. It says in verse 15, And he said unto them, Go, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. For serving the Lord, proclaiming his salvation. Point number one, serving the Lord and proclaiming his salvation. This is how supernatural signs will follow us who are faithful. He has called us. He has commissioned us. He has sent us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And it's in obedience to what he has told us to do. You'll find those supernatural signs will follow. Point number one, serving the Lord, proclaiming his salvation. I'm reading verse 17, and this sign shall follow them. That believe in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Point number two secured for life with protective signs. The signs that protect, the signs that promote, the signs that preserve. Secured for life with protective signs. These signs will protect us from sickness, protect us from affliction, protect us from demons, protect us from satanic attack, protect us from all the things that are raging in the world. We're secured for life with protective signs. And then in verse 20, and the word for will go forth. I said, we'll go forth. It's in obedience to his word. As we go forth and do what the Lord has called us to do. It's in that going forth or see that mighty power of the Lord upon your life. And he went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. And confirming the word or signs following. Point number three. Saving the lost through promised signs. Saving the lost through promised signs. We come to number one. Serving the Lord. Proclaiming his salvation. That's what the Lord has told us to do. He has told us that the very work we do, the assignment he has given us, the commission he has laid upon us, the responsibility that we have from the Lord is preaching the gospel of salvation, preaching the gospel of grace, preaching the gospel that takes a sinner out of his sin and bringing him to the salvation of the Lord. He says we should do that in our community and do that in our state and do that in our nation and do that in every nation and do that all over the world to every creature. Chapter 16 of Mark verse 15. And he said unto them, he saying unto us today, and we're going to receive that word. The charge, the challenge, and the commission. The great work he has given us to do. He said unto them, and he's saying unto you, Go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. You'll travel by land, you'll travel by sea, you'll travel by air. You'll travel on your own legs, you'll travel with car, you'll travel with every means of transportation. But go, go. Then just stay where you are. He's giving us a work to do. And this year is a year of obedience. We're going to obey the Lord. And the profit or the outcome, the blessing of all of the people that obey, we're going to have the blessings of obedience this year. I thought you'd say good amen. 
go ye search into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. That's the gospel of salvation. So that those who are lost will be found. Those who are sinful will be forgiven. And those who are saved will be saved. And then it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He wants us to so preach the gospel convincingly. And he wants us to preach the gospel faithfully. He wants us to preach the gospel to bring people out of where they are. It's a transformational gospel. It's a life-changing gospel. It's a converting gospel. It's not just to talk, not just to give history, and not just to preach. It is to preach in such a way that people will want to decide for Christ. He that believeth, they decide to believe. Because you presented the gospel so convincingly, you're talking about Jesus Christ who died for us, Jesus Christ who gave his life, Jesus Christ who shed his blood, Jesus Christ who became our substitute, and he took our punishment, he took our sin, he took our sorrow, he took our grief upon him. And you preach that so convincingly, they lay all the iniquity and sin upon him. He that believeth. They believe what you have said because that's the word. And then he says, they will be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. The Lord has sent you to do it. You will do it. Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. The Lord said, He has given us His word. In this church, He has given us His word. Why has He given us His word? Number one, for our personal benefit. Number two, for our neighbor's benefit. Number one, for our personal benefit. He has given us His word. I will believe that word. I will live by that word. I will sage by that word. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Because he has given us the word. Have you got the word? Have you believed? How many of us have believed and you have been baptized in water? Can I see your hand? You've been baptized in water after believing. Praise the Lord. If you have believed, you have not been baptized in water, you tell our leaders wherever you are, you need to be baptized in water. That's what he said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, I'm not among them. He that believeth not, those are the damned people, doomed people, the people that are going to suffer eternally. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, he has given us the word so that, number one, we believe. And we're baptized in water, and then we we'll begin to live a righteous life, a renewed life, a redeemed life, and then we're saved. And now for the benefit of other people, we're to give that same word, preach that same word unto other people, so that they can be saved. And it says, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. In verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that 